Uh, today we're gonna be talking about, like there's there's been some racism that's been put towards one of the actresses in Star Wars, and then the right is like freaking out about like, why is Disney making such a big deal about just a little bit of racism? Today we're gonna be looking at a channel called The Comment Section with Brett Cooper. So this is a channel that has popped up recently in the last, uh, it's only been around for like a few months, but it's already up to 562,000 subscribers, which is a little bit concerning. This channel is basically the Daily Wire's attempt to create a modern commentary channel, kind of in the style of what I'm doing or what uh, Hassan does. Basically a sort of more of an informal type stream where you just react to things and give your opinions. I think people on the right realized that this was a popular format, so they're like, let's get a, a woman who looks and sounds vaguely like Ben Shapiro, like a younger Ben Shapiro, and just uh, put her in a gaming chair with the typical podcast mic. It's all extremely, extremely corporate, but you know, she wants to make it seem like she's not corporate. So she tries to have this like laid back style of like, oh, it's just us hanging out as friends where, you know, she's being funded by billionaires who are getting her to push right-wing propaganda to young people. I'm not exactly sure who owns the Daily Wire. I know that like Ben Shapiro is probably their biggest figure, but basically they realize in order to get the young people on their side, that they should try and copy what, you know, what kind of more left-wing people have been doing because it seems to be working. I was just checking out her channel and I found a few of her videos and I'm like, Holy shit, this is just filled with pretty much outright lies. She's just giving straight up inaccurate information, making horrible arguments, but it's attractive to young right-wing teens because, you know, she's saying what they want to hear, basically. So we're just going to go through a few of her videos, kind of pick apart what she's saying, because uh, I think she makes some pretty terrible arguments and just kind of pretty much lies a lot about what is actually being said and what's actually going on. This video is called Star Wars Accused Their Entire Fandom of What? Let me lay a little bit of the groundwork for this. So there's a new show called Obi-Wan that has come out uh, in the last few weeks. And there has been a controversy around one of the actresses in the show. She plays the role of, I think it's called the fifth sister. She's basically an inquisitor and her role is to like go out and kill the Jedi, basically. She's been getting a lot of backlash online of people saying that they really don't like her character. And she posted on Instagram showing that she had gotten a bunch of like racist DMs of people reaching out and just, you know, being racist towards her because she's black, because of course, Star Wars fans, a lot of them are fucking insane. Not all of them, but anyway, basically this girl just comes in and gives really terrible, dishonest commentary about what has been going on. Racist. Who was that? I wanna say that's like Count Dankula or something. Basically the idea behind this video is she's gonna try to paint a narrative that Star Wars is trying to call the entire fandom racist because there's been some people who have been racist towards this actress. Back to the comments section, I'm Brett Cooper. Now you guys might know that I'm not the biggest Star Wars nerd. I have watched the like quintessential trilogy. Your comments, I've seen your tweets. I have seen your posts on Reddit about how I need to be, you know, up with the times on. I think it's because her content is pandering mostly to like young conservative men and there are a lot of young conservative men who are Star Wars fans. So yeah, it's just very weird because she's trying to give this like aesthetic that she's like a down to earth streamer. She clearly has producers that are sitting there like feeding her. Not, I, I'm not saying they're feeding her what to say, but they're definitely feeding her like, this is the topic you're gonna talk about. Basically like, this is a very corporate thing that she's doing here, but she's trying to make it seem like she's just another down to earth internet streamer. Star Wars has a new TV show that just came out. It came out on May 27th. It is the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show starring Ewan McGregor and people have some feelings about it, specifically about the woman, Moses Ingram, who is playing the villain 
in this TV show. We are proud to welcome Moses Ingram to the Star Wars family and excited for Reva's story to unfold. If anyone intends to make her feel in any way unwelcome, we have one thing to say. We resist. So caught my attention and suddenly I'm like, okay, well, where did this go? I scroll into the replies and I see there are more than 20 million sentient beings in the Star Wars galaxy. Don't choose to be a racist. So I feel like that's a pretty reasonable thing to say. Unless you think it is okay to be a racist, I don't see what would be unreasonable about that. Moses Ingram has said that she has received racist DMs so the Star Wars Twitter is just calling out the people that have been openly racist towards her. She doesn't care about Star Wars. She's not a Star Wars fan. She didn't even really watch the show. The only reason that she's getting involved in this is because she realizes, ooh, we can spin this into a right-wing narrative that like Star Wars is calling everyone racist. Because anytime that people like her can stir up a storm where they're like, are they saying that everyone is racist? when that's literally not even what Star Wars is saying. This is from the official Star Wars account. So they are making this broad sweeping statement saying that everyone in their fandom is racist. They very literally are not doing that. That is just straight up not what they're doing. First of all, okay, just think from like a marketing perspective. How fucking stupid would a company have to be to label every single person in their fandom racist? No company would do that. That's just not what is happening here. All that Star Wars is saying is they're saying that you don't get to be a part of our fandom if you are racist. They are not making a sweeping generalization that everyone is racist. So I don't even know how she could have possibly come to this conclusion unless she's just straight up lying because she's trying to push a narrative. I don't even know what response can I give other than no, that's just literally not what's happening here. You don't have to like the show. You don't have to like a character just because it's played by a black actress. If you send her racist DMs, that means that you're a racist and Star Wars is taking a public stance that they're against that. Like... <laughs> when you put something out into the world, when I put this content out in the world, I am okay with the fact that people might not like it. I'm okay with the fact that I might get comments, people being like, I disagree with you on this, I don't like this. That is what happens when you put any kind of entertainment or- See, if Star Wars tweeted out, <laughs> anyone who doesn't like Moses' Ingram's character is a racist, then this would be valid criticism. But that's not what they tweeted out. They just tweeted out, don't be a racist. If you're racist, you're not a part of this fandom. So you're just completely spinning this into something that isn't even what they actually said. To be fair, and I want to touch on this, Moses Ingram did receive some actual racist messages. She pulled them out of her DMs. She posted them on her Instagram story. And these are... Okay, so stop the video here. There's nothing for you to spin here. Not liking Moses' Ingram's character doesn't automatically make someone racist, but I do see validity to the argument that there seems to be a larger amount of anger towards her character than feels warranted. Like, in my opinion, it seems like her character is pretty similar to Kylo Ren, but I've been seeing her get way more criticism than I saw Kylo Ren getting. There's like way more hatred coming towards an actress than there would be if it was like a white man playing the same character. There's probably some subconscious racism going on there. Does that mean that every single person in the Star Wars fandom is racist? Of course not. But you have to analyze that there could be some element of racism happening. Just so that we are consistent and that we are seeing every side, we should look at what people are sending her. So yeah, there was just literal straight up racism. This word is an actual slur. So she is receiving actual racism. There are hundreds of those, hundreds. Um, I think the thing that bothers me is that like, sort of this feeling that I've had inside of myself, which no one has told me, but this feeling of like, I just gotta shut up and take it. You know, I just kind of got to bury it. Um, and I'm not built like that. Thank you to the people who show up for me in the comments and um, to the rest of y'all. 
Yeah, weird. I feel like there is kind of this idea online where I, as a fan, have the right to send you some insane DM, but you shouldn't be responding to that in any way. And if like you respond to me being hateful towards you, that means you're like not grateful for the role or something where they think that an actor isn't allowed to respond to insane hateful shit that they're getting. You're a fucking idiot if your response to not liking a character is to go and attack the actress that plays the character. I mean, you can criticize her acting to a certain extent, but just be normal about it. Even if you think it's bad saying, I think her acting was bad. There's nothing wrong with that. It crosses a line when you're sending her DMs or obviously, <laughs> you know, being a literal fucking racist. She says she's gotten hundreds of these messages. We only saw a couple of them. Maybe they are flooding her DMs. Maybe they aren't. I don't know. But when you are a public figure, you are knowingly putting yourself out into the world and you should expect that you're going to get scrutiny. And Yeah, I agree that when you're a public figure, you're going to get scrutiny, but you should also be able to respond to that scrutiny. Like if, if you think that you're getting unwarranted amounts of hate, then you should be able to give a response to that. You know, maybe people won't agree with your response and that's fine. Some people have this idea in their heads of like, it's totally fine to send as much hate as you want towards like an actor, but the second that they give any sort of clap back, then they've crossed the line in some way. Anyway, it's sucky that she's having to deal with that, but I don't think that it's the entire Star Wars fandom just being racist. That's what's so stupid about this video is no one is saying that the entire Star Wars fandom is racist. Disney doesn't think the entire Star Wars fandom is racist. That actress wasn't accusing every single Star Wars fan of being racist. Who thinks that every single Star Wars fan is racist? No one except you making this claim that that's what people think. Because a lot of the critiques are genuinely about her acting and about her writing not about the color of her skin. There were a bunch of tweets about that. Somebody said, well, the racist backlash is bad, but Reva's character itself is poorly written and badly executed. We all loved Mace Windu, Lando, Moff Gideon, and also Finn's characters in the Star Wars universe. They all had a big impact on the franchise. I, I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with that tweet. I think that that's pretty level-headed for the most part that you can criticize her without being racist. Think about Kelly Marie Tran. When everybody hated her character and thought that her acting was terrible as well, she claimed that it was racism as well. And How do you know that she wasn't experiencing racism? With how insane that these fans are being towards Moses Ingram, they were probably sending Kelly Marie Tran racist messages as well. She turned it around and said, oh, everybody's being racist to me because I'm Asian. Like she was on all of these like major news networks talking about it. It was a whole thing. But the difference was she didn't have receipts like Moses Ingram does. It, it's just what's so annoying about this video is the entire premise of the video. It's just completely built on a false premise because no one is saying that every single Star Wars fan is racist. I don't know why they're acting like this. They're doing some big revolutionary thing. Like, oh my God, now everybody's racist. Maybe it's just that you dropped the ball on this show and on this character. If they had just said, you know what? That's what happens when you put things out in the world. Some people might not like it. Let's fix it next time. Disney isn't saying everyone needs to stop giving their opinions on our show. They're saying the specific people who are being racist towards one of our actresses are unacceptable, so we're gonna take a public stance against that. I don't see what's so insane about that. I don't wanna be redundant, but I think it's important to always point out when we see examples of this, this is a typical leftist tactic that when you have a negative opinion about, you know, something that they've put out, some creative thing, whatever, they immediately turn it around and say, you know, you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe, whatever. It when there is like an undercurrent of something subconscious that is happening, someone like a person of color seems to be getting a lot more backlash than the white actors in a show. I would never make a direct accusation that all of the people who don't like her character are being racist. I think it's totally fine to not like her character, but when there's a general trend that like a white character and a black character are pretty similar, but the black character is getting like 10 times more hate than the white character, there might be some subconscious things going on here. It feels like conservatives only think that racism can happen on like a forward level, basically. I don't know the exact percentage of people who actually are being racist or aren't being racist, but I think that it is worth like pointing out that sometimes racism can be a factor that leads people to 
overwhelmingly dislike black characters. This person has a very different opinion and says, not going to clog up my timeline broadly discussing Hollywood and diversity. The main story is powerful enough. Emmy nominated Yale educated woman of color. Moses Ingram isn't good or qualified enough for the Star Wars fans. She's black. You're racist. There isn't any nuance. Um, <laughs> okay. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that tweet. If they're responding to the people who are sending her racist DMs then obviously it is true that that person is racist, but I don't necessarily agree with if this person's trying to imply that any person who doesn't like her character is racist. But again, this is some random person. I don't, this isn't like coming from Disney. Again, and that's something, that's a pitfall of both sides of the political aisle, you know, claiming that everything is super black and white and very binary. No, a lot of these issues do have nuance. Yes. Yeah, I agree that these issues have nuance. You're the one who's painting this black and white picture that Star Wars is calling every single fan a racist when that's not what they're doing. You are the one who is painting a black and white narrative. But no, not the entire fandom is racist. They have valid criticisms. And conflating those all together, these are two distinct conversations that should be had. And Star Wars is muddling it and shooting themselves in the foot by making these broad sweeping statements. One often meets his destiny on the road he takes to avoid it. What the fuck was that clip that they put in? I think there's a lot of kind of like Gen X conservatives who think that young people really like when you edit in random clips from other movies because they think it like, oh, this makes it relatable because there's a Kung Fu Panda clip that you threw in there. Just throwing in movie clips from a movie that came out 10 years ago, that's not gonna appeal to the younger generation. Ewan McGregor jumped in with his own personal message that was then posted on the Star Wars Twitter. This is all going on the same account. It seems that some of the fan base from this influential fan base have decided to attack Moses Ingram online and send her the- You hear how he said some of the fan base? Like, <laughs> he didn't say all of the fan base, he said some of the fan base. Most horrendous racist DMs. I just want to say as the leading actor in the series, as the executive producer in the series, that we stand with Moses. We love Moses. And if you're sending her bullying messages, you're no Star Wars fan in my mind. That's a nice sentiment. Okay. What? I, do, I don't understand the point of why you made this video. The point of why you made this video is you saw that like Star Wars and racism were in the headlines. And so your fucking conservative media group was like, oh, Star Wars and racism, that's going to get a lot of clicks. So we need to spin this into a narrative that Star Wars is accusing everyone of being racist. Well, he says, if you are bullying, Moses, if you're sending bullying messages, then you're no fan of Star Wars. What is bullying? Is that the actual racist messages? Or is that saying, hey, I don't really like your acting. Hey, I'm not a fan of the writing. Again, he's conflating all of this. That how do you, how do you know that he's conflating all of this? I don't see any reason why you need to be sending people fucking messages because you didn't like the way that they played a role. Just, I don't know, tweet about it, post on your fucking Facebook about it, or, you know, make a blog post, or, you know, even you can make YouTube videos posting reviews. I'm totally all for criticizing things, and I don't think that if you're a white person, you have to think every single black character is good or anything like that. But I do think that when you feel the need to go out of your way to privately DM an actor, at that point, you're having a weird fucking parasocial relationship with that actor. If you wanna make a public critique of a TV show, do it in a public setting. You don't need to fucking walk up to an actor on the street and like yell at them because you think they're a bad actor or send them a DM or like go to their fucking house or some shit. I do the show and I think that I'm pretty nice and I'm pretty empathetic, but I do make fun of things a fair amount of the time. And so some people have said, oh, why are you being such an ass? That whatever, I get hate from it all the time. Who cares? Again, that's the age of the internet. I hate this argument of like, people are just mean, so that's just how it is. No, we should have some common fucking decency. And you cannot dictate people's opinions of you, and you cannot dictate whether somebody is going to be kind and empathetic with their critique, or whether they're going to be an ass. You can't take away people's right to be ass. Like, we're not gonna be passing a law that says you have to be nice to people. And I don't think you would even apply that if someone was being an asshole to a conservative, you would completely flip-flop the other way. You'd be like, they're being so rude and so disrespectful. If someone was like sending a Christian person a hate message, you would completely flip-flop and have the exact opposite perspective. My perspective is regardless of who it is, 
don't fucking send people like hateful DMs. Don't fucking dox people. Don't like go up and yell at them or whatever. I'm, I'm definitely for protesting, but I don't think, especially when it's just a fucking actor in a show, you don't need to be going out of your way and attacking them. It's just some classic Disney hypocrisy because Disney and Star Wars and all these actors are immediately rallying behind Moses. So I'd like to just jog your memory of something that happened a couple of years ago. Many people are pointing it out on the internet. I don't know if you guys remember the film, The Force Awakens. Oh, I remember. Well, putting in a South Park clip from 12 years ago that the majority of your younger audience isn't even gonna know what that is. That movie was starring uh, John Boyega as Finn. There's John Boyega. Big, very prominent, he's the leading actor, and he's very important in that film. And we see the Chinese version of the film. John Boyega has been shrunken. Okay, so this is valid criticism. I totally agree with this criticism, but the problem with Disney isn't that they're too woke, it's that they publicly act like they're progressive while they actually don't give a fuck because they're a massive corporation. They'll bend to the whims of whoever is going to give them the most money. So if they're going into a market where they know that like a gay kissing scene is going to get them banned, they'll cut it out because they prioritize money over artistic integrity. And I think that's totally a valid criticism of Disney. But the problem isn't that they're too left-leaning, it's that they're pretending to be left-leaning while actually being right-leaning. I think there's a ton of valid criticisms that you can make of Disney. Disney publicly is saying like, oh, we're pro-LGBT, but then behind the scenes, they're donating to anti-LGBT politicians. If I'm gonna criticize Disney, it's gonna be for something that Disney is actually doing. You're creating a mountain out of a molehill here because Disney did not accuse all the fans of being racist, so you're just accusing them of something that they didn't actually do. Now, we know why they did this. We've talked about it on the show before. Disney preaches being committed to their values and anti-racism and, you know, being the beacon of progressive love and tolerance. But they are more than willing to compromise all of these values to go against everything that they preach here in the United States to make a buck in, in the Middle East and in China. That's because that's called capitalism. Artistic integrity isn't what comes first. It's making money. I mean, I guess the point is that she's just trying to tear down Disney, not that she's actually critiquing the way capitalism works, obviously, because she's being funded by billionaires and massive corporations herself. She just wants to tear down Disney because Disney is like the woke corporation or whatever. Cut out parts of their movies, cut people out of posters, but oh no, the moment that you criticize one of their actors in the United States, you are a racist. They were, they were criticizing the people who were being racist to her, which you admitted people were doing. You are unprincipled and you do not care. This is all posturing. This is all performative. Some I agree with that. I agree that Disney has no actual morals. But the problem is not being woke. The problem is that they're not actually woke. They're lying because they're a corporation. We'll defend our actors from racist people. Also, Disney, let's edit the movie so black people appear less in the movie on the Chinese version and become more marketable there. What about another actress who faced immeasurable hate, death threats on the internet, who was in the Star Wars fandom just a year and a half ago? Does Gina Carano ring a bell? That's it. When she posted her political opinions online, people tore her to shreds. Okay. So this is really, really stupid. The reason that Gina, uh, Gina Carano, I think is her name, the reason that she got fired from Disney is because she made a comparison between conservatives and the Jews being attacked by the Nazis in Nazi Germany. People rightfully criticize the way that this is really racist towards Jewish people. Like that's super disrespectful to trivialize the actual genocide that they went through and compare it to the way that some people are rude towards conservatives because they don't like their beliefs. The reason that Disney did didn't stand behind Gina Carano is because she was the one being racist. So Moses Ingram is experiencing racism and Gina Carano is being racist, but yet Disney should just support both of them because they're both actresses? That's not hypocrisy. You're not calling out hypocrisy. And Star Wars did not post and say, we support her. There are 20 million sentient species in the Star Wars galaxy. Don't be a dick. I mean, she didn't say don't be a racist. She said, don't be a dick. She knows that the reason she got fired is for being racist. 
And if you don't remember, here's a couple of things that were said about Gina. I'm gonna kill Gina, racist bitch, get fired already. Gina Carano, suck my dick, bitch. Kill yourself, Nazi sympathizer. You're literally a racist. You shade Black Lives Matter. You block people saying BLM. You post pro-cop propaganda. That makes you a racist bitch. And again, I still think it's weird parasocial behavior if you're going out and telling someone to, to unalive themselves or sending them personal DMs like I, I'm just against the uh, across the board. I'm anti death threat, anti sending like DMs to actors. Like I was saying, I think you should be able to use your public platform to criticize someone's racist actions. I don't think that it's bad for someone to be fired if they're being racist. And if Disney doesn't want to associate with someone being racist, then they have the choice to fire her if they want to. Minimizing the trauma of Jewish people is a pretty legitimate reason. But she was just doubling down on it. She wasn't even like apologetic in any way. She was like, I'm such a victim because people are upset that I compared the plight of conservatives to the plight of Jewish people, you know? So if you're just gonna double down and like double down on being a racist, then it makes sense that the company would be like, okay, we're gonna sever ties with you at that point. Gina handled it eloquently. She handled it with empathy and kindness. She's doing great. She's about to do a movie with us. It's coming out very, very- Oh, yay. You know that your career is going great when you can only get work from the fucking Daily Wire. And it looks like it's probably gonna be some sort of piece of pro-gun propaganda. I wouldn't be surprised. Clearly the Daily Wire's intention isn't to create great art. But Disney completely turned their back on her. And that's the problem. Because if they preach about tolerance and supporting their actors, why did they not support her? Nope. Because of the tolerance paradox, you can't be like, you need to tolerate my intolerance. That's not how it works. It is completely different to not tolerate someone being intolerant and not tolerate people being intolerant towards your actress. These are two completely different things. They didn't support Gina Carano because she was being actively racist. Moses Ingram is not being actively racist. She's having racism poured onto her. So it's completely the opposite. Nobody talked about all of these messages and tweets and DMs that she was receiving on a daily basis. Nobody cared. This was not part of the news cycle. They only cared when she got fired. Yeah, well, generally people don't care as much about hate being put towards a racist person than racist hate being put towards a black person. Even if someone's being racist, I don't think you should give them death threats. I think there are certain levels of respect that we should, like, I don't think you should give people death threats. I don't think you should dox people. I don't think you should be sending celebrities private DMs being a parasocial weirdo. But I do think that people should express their opinions of if they think someone's being racist, racist, I think that people are totally within their right to express that. This whole right-wing propaganda is just trying to, like, stop people from calling out racism as much as possible. As much as they'll be like, it was good that Ewan McGregor said that you shouldn't be racist, but what he's actually trying to say is that everyone in the Star Wars fandom is racist, when that's not even what he's saying at all. Unprincipled people and unprincipled organizations, there is nothing that angers me more because it's all performative and people buy into it and they know it and they do not care. Everything about it is hypocritical. There's always going to be dip <laughs> There are always going to be ass <laughs> Let it roll off, find new opportunities, move on. That is what Gina did. And even though Star Wars treated her terribly, she was able to rise and she's doing great things. And it's just like everything about this is just hypocritical. And Star Wars and Moses Ingram, it really does feel like a PR stunt. And honestly, bringing all of this up, it's just making it worse for both of them. I mean, basically the entire premise of your video wasn't based in reality. Uh, I think you brought up a few valid criticisms of Disney. I do think the point of that, like we shouldn't be telling people to unalive themselves no matter what. I agree with that point, but everything else, it's not hypocritical to criticize someone for being racist, but then condemn people being racist towards a different person. That's not hypocrisy. And Disney was not saying that all of the Star Wars fans are racist. All right, so I think we get the basic idea of what her type of content is. It's not really any sort of critical thinking. She's doing what we know conservatives do, just spinning these insane narratives that aren't based in actual reality.